This episode of Reality Transplaining is to protect you. This is about you and protecting you from being exploited by spiritual fraudsters. Stay tuned. Well, hello, transurfers and the transurfing curious. My name is Xavier Watercane, and I'm here with Rene Garcia, and this is another episode of Reality Transplaining. And today we're re re transplaining a very juicy subject, a subject that it seems to be gaining much more attention than it really deserves, but actually that is a really valuable subject to talk about, and we really should call it out. And that subject is Rene. Spiritual fraud. Spiritual fraud, <laughs> yes, spiritual fraud, which we define for the purposes of this conversation as using spirituality to engage in fraudulent practices, i.e. Mm. making promises that you don't deliver on, not acting authentically, ethically, or um, honestly. Yeah. Yep. And also and, in the world of spiritual uh, of self development, not just spirituality, but self development also. And self, yes, because yes, because your spirituality is a really big one, but a lot of the spiritual fraud comes from the self development side of the spiritual community. So we, we should really talk about it's a, a lot of this is really about the self development community. Yes. Now, just to unpack this just a little bit, the self development community is made up of people who are interested in improving themselves somehow mm -hmm. yeah right. so if you don't even have the consciousness that you want to improve yourself or you need to improve yourself this you're not going to be attracted to self-development but people seek self-development in a variety of different ways yeah Fifth through thing. education through education through their career through their jobs through um their relationships with people, but many people ever since, maybe since the 1960s, so this has been going on for maybe about 50 years now, this idea of awakening to a greater version of yourself, and especially in the New Thought Movement, which started about the turn of the 1900s, so it's been mm. going on for 100 years now, and which has ideas such as the law of attraction and you create your own reality those are all of those ideas they've always been very powerfully involved in the self-development industry as well the sdi the self-development industry so because you've got a lot of people who are interested in this sort of thing you're going to have a lot of people who are wanting a service and you're going to have a lot of service providers and but, you get a lot of people coming to this industry the sector of reality that are yes. traumatized broken going through some life-altering change like me i found trans surfing out of a or really still still in a pretty epic nervous breakdown yes. um, and often and often the people who are in that situation uh, have also pursued other shall we say more conventional paths of self-development and for what reason or another, those um, paths have either failed people uh, or they, they're not psychologically suited to particular paths. And so they're more attracted to thing to other paths. And also, and this is, I think a really big one, and I'd like to call this one out straight away. There are often people who have had very, very bad parenting. Mm -hmm. And yep. they're looking for a parental figure. Mm. And they often find that parental figure in the form of a mentor or a guru of mm -hmm. some sort. And unless that mentor or the guru is coming from a very, very ethical, conscious space mm -hmm. and knows what's going on and realizes the limitations, isn't honest about that, the potential sannyasin, to use a term from... Um, what was it? Osho, uh, mm -hmm. Bhagwan Sri Rashni, Sanyasin, seeker, the seekers of truth can be incredibly exploited. Yes. It's God, like exchange, it's... It's, it's like exchanging one horrible, one horrible upbringing 
And because you have no idea what really good parenting looks like, you're looking for a parental figure. And that parental figure, you're probably not going to be a very good judge of character because you've never developed the ability to be a good judge of character. Mm -hmm. And you've never developed the internal tests for mm -hmm. being a good judge of character. So you're going to get very, you're going to be very, very vulnerable to exploitation. So we're going to talk today about those various forms of exploitation and bad behavior among people in the SDI. And we're also going to talk about some case histories. Renee, you you have a lot, a couple, a few juicy stories about yes. your encounters with spiritual frauds in various degrees. And I also have a very interesting, what I think is anyway, an interesting case history of spiritual fraudstership um, with really tragic results. So, wow. Renee, <laughs> is, there any, is, there, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Well, or, or do you just want to launch into a story? Um, I mean, I, I would like to say that, and I brought this up on my video that I did titled Spiritual Fraud, that you know, I came to this space fresh faced and bright eyed and bushy tailed, right? I had no real understanding of this space. Like I had seen some Bob Proctor videos, but that's, and I had heard of Bashar, like a friend of mine was like, Hey, have you ever heard of Bashar? And I listened to some of it. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting and weird, but I really did. And I, I knew that it was a space, but I had no understanding of the, you know, the lay of the land. And as I stated in my video, I came into the space and I was kind of like, oh, great, here I am um, looking to connect with my higher and better self and want to self-develop and want to do what I can to contribute positively here. And I and, was- and, and also, and I was also say probably in love with all of these new ideas. Like you probably oh. hadn't had the, the idea that there even was such a thing as a higher self. Oh God, yeah, it. totally. I mean, these are, like, these are concepts that maybe a lot of people are very used to, but that for some people are completely new and a complete awakening for, because they've because their consciousness has never gone in that area of the alternative space. Right. And exactly. So you can fall so in love with the just with the ideas if you're and, that and, inclined. And I was and I was probably a little bit, I don't want to say blinded by the ideas, but here I was thinking that the ideas and the knowledge and would, would the enough. stuff, yeah, was like the I was taking it all at face value, like thinking yes. this is what the space was. Little did I know you know, that little and, did she know. Little, <laughs> oh my God. And I can't wait to get into some of these stories because, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to call anybody out directly. We have changed the names to protect those that may want to kill me after this podcast. <laughs> Cause that's kind of how I feel right now is like, you know, I've always been the one that speaks out, but when yeah. you speak out and this is something that I actually learned today, when well, you in the last in the last 24 hours in the last 20 <laughs> you're, you're you're seeing a live alignment line up live oh here God. on the reality transurfing so <laughs> okay so so when somebody has created a house of cards yes. and they have put a lot of money into this house of cards flashy into, flashy cards flashy, flashy cards. cards and With numbers messages. and <laughs> with messages from your angels <laughs> with yes exactly and then you come in and kick that fucking house of cards down oh yes. my god people get a little bit nuts and i have been in a position a number of times in my life where i call people out on their bullshit but this yes. is really the first time that i've called people out on their bullshit in a um, professional space where yes. it is screwing with their money. And yes. it is, it is, it is absolutely unbelievable that like, I want to say this for 
for those of you that are watching and hearing this sort of like <laughs> warning of, you know, there's people that are in this space that will take advantage of the weak and broken and those that are hungry for knowledge that are stripped down or coming out of a nervous breakdown or any of that kind of stuff. There are people that will take advantage of people, weakened people, but there are also people that will take advantage of naive people, kind of like me. I'm not trying to play myself off as a victim here, but I definitely did not expect that the crowd in the self-development scene was going to roll this hard and be this cutthroat. It, I thought that the jewelry business was a cutthroat business, but it has it is it is no comparison to the self development business. This business is ruthless and it's cutthroat. And these so called you know spiritually enlightened people, a lot of them, we hear of their names every day. They will fucking cut you <laughs> if you mm, say mm, anything. Mm against what it is they're doing. And I'm encountering that today. Hmm. And hmm. I would like to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. Well, <laughs> we've got some juicy stuff over the next, but however long this takes, because this, there's probably a lot to unpack here. We might, even have to turn, we might even have to turn it into two episodes. I can already see this. But because <laughs> otherwise it'll play a bit on your attention span. I would remind people again, that if they want to zip through with this, and if their minds can take it, they can play this at 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, or two, or yeah. double speed. So, which is what I always do, because people can hear and process information much faster than people can actually talk. So, yes. even though I can talk very quickly, and I can talk very quickly for a long time, and I can think very quickly, it's probably a good idea um, for me to maintain a normal uh, pace, and for <laughs> Renee to do also. However, there's nothing stopping you from exercising your power and playing this faster because we only have enough hours in the day but yeah. what we have to reveal over the next however long this takes yeah you you want to hear all these juicy be, details you're, you're going to want to do all these juicy, and this is really about protecting you this is really this this pot this cast this podcast we call them podcasts they're podcasts who cares anyway this this episode of reality transplaning okay this i'll do this again so that that ab can take up the um the, the what do you call it the front bit yes uh, yes so this is the front bit okay this is the front bit this episode of reality transplaining is to protect you this is about you and protecting you from being exploited by spiritual fraudsters stay tuned okay so there's my, <laughs> there's your so there's, there's your there's intro my, that'll be a good one intro. That's my <laughs> intro bit we should do that more consciously yes anyway, so moving so moving right along so we both, both Renee and I have had a, a lot of experience with spiritual forces. I want to we hear both... your, I want to hear your story. I'm excited. Oh, uh, well, we'll, we'll hear that one after we've heard yours. Oh, so, I got to go first. <laughs> you you got to go. <laughs> oh, no. Just, okay. So you do, uh, you, you do, you do yours. Okay. Oh, so okay. I'll show you let's, mine let's, and you show me yours. You, it's all right. You show me yours and I'll show you mine. <laughs> Isn't that okay. the way it usually works in these situations? Okay. 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 So you go so, first. Go first. Okay. I'll go first. So, um, God, where do I even start? Okay. So we'll start with Gupta. Gupta. So we've changed the names. <laughs> the first one, we're going to call him Gupta. Um, Gupta has, uh, was, I don't know, uh, doing a reality transurfing deal. And he was kind of one of the top guys in the space. Right. Um, and in then space? In, in the ITI space? In the transurfing space. In the transurfing space. In the transurfing space. Trans because, trans because like, contrary to popular opinion, transurfing isn't just Renee or Vadim. Yeah, there have it's been other people. Of, there have been other people. There have there have been other people, and I guess maybe this would be a this would be a good um, a good opportunity for me. And I'm not going to get into too much of the details, just because it's a little bit inappropriate. But like the legalities behind protecting 
the term reality transferring and making and to be and to and to be blunt, the brand, the brand, because yeah, the, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Be, and and the reason that you and the reason for the millions of people watching this that you need to protect a brand is because a brand is all about integrity. Companies will spend billions and billions of dollars to maintain the integrity of the brand because people need, for example, to know that when they buy a bottle of Coca Cola, they're not going to be made sick because of the qual because of quality control. Exactly. And also, there's an expect, and there's also an expectation when you buy a McDonald's hamburger, you know that you're going to get a particular sort of experience. Exactly. So Renee, uh, so when Renee and I work really hard to maintain the integrity of the brand. Yes, absolutely. To the best of our to the best of our ability, the what our intent, our strong intention is that when you enter into at least our bit of the reality transfer thing space, you're engaging with people who are trying to be as honest and authentic as they can be with you and to offer you something that might be of help to you. Yes. And you will never be hard sold on anything because that's oh, not man. the way that we, and when it's actually a contradiction of the whole, of the whole reality transurfing space, because if you look at the, if you look at some of the basic core principles of reality transurfing is that it's, we look at reality as a negotiation between conscious beings with good intent. And then when you find something, yeah, it's just like, it's, it, it can, it can, well, and that gets me to the point that I, I wanted to make, like the term reality transurfing is a new term and there's a curiosity that surrounds it, right? So like people that come to this term, especially since it's a term that's in a specific space, you know, it, 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 I, and I had to learn this the hard way when I was certified and I met the deem and I started on this journey, I started to build some structure. And one of the things that I built was the, you know, my, what was originally called the reality transferring Academy. This was the first story that I, um, the first experience that I had, I was actually going to save this story until the second one, but it's probably more appropriate that I tell it now. So I started the Reality Transurfing Academy and shortly after one of the major, major guys in the space completely ripped it off. He started calling himself Reality Transurfing Academy. And what that did, what that did was it led people to believe that he was affiliated with me and Vadim, and he started some courses and what ended up happening is he made. Are we a, talking about? Are we still talking about Gupta? No, we're talking about Chad now. Okay, okay. So we're going to start with the Chad story. Then. <laughs> we're starting with the Chad story. Names okay. have been it's, names have been changed yeah. to protect my uh, my life. <laughs> well, and, <laughs> so I don't. Yeah, and, and and to some extent to protect the guilty. Okay, so let's yes. talk about Chad. So how did so so let's hear the story about Chad. And, and how that became an example of spiritual fraudsterism. What Chad did is Chad started a membership program that locked people into a monthly reality transurfing program with a, with a monthly payment. And, oh. and what happened was he made it to where there were no contact details for him should people want to cancel their membership or get a refund. But really? since he, but since that's, he had, that's not that's not very nice. <laughs> but yeah, but since he had taken my name, Reality oh. Transurfing Academy, and I was on Vadim's website, people were contacting me, demanding refunds, demanding oh. um, membership cancellations. Was was Chad not delivering? Chad apparently was grossly not delivering. And how and, was that? And, and and what was Chad offering? Chad was offering some monthly, I don't even know, some monthly thing. All that I knew about it was that people were, people, people were demanding money back. People were demanding cancel um, membership cancellations. And I even got a couple of people that were threatening to sue um, Reality Transurfing Academy for the few hundred dollars that they feel they had been ripped off. And I was, and I was the one getting these messages and I had absolutely no affiliation to this guy at all. And you so had I, no idea what Chad was doing. I had no idea what he was doing. So the first, so the first you heard of it was when people started talking to you about, excuse me, I have done this 
and I can't get in, in contact with Chad and I'm just wondering what's going on. Yeah, and I tried to because contact him a number of times and tell him that I um, tell him that I, I he couldn't use my name. I said, dude, you you flat out stole my name. I never got any message back from him. Um, oh. so, so then I ended up telling Vadim and Vadim took action against him. And it was what really- what, what, what action did Vadim specifically take? Put him on the blacklist. Okay. <laughs> The, the Russian, the Russian action, the Russian blacklist. Yes, yes I, see. So, I, I suppose. I, I suppose it's better than sending somebody around to break kneecaps. Exactly. Um, so I kind of felt like the the messages, the emails, the requests for refunds, the few people that were threatening to take me to small claims court. I'm like, I don't even have anything to do with this thing. Um, it started to feel as though if I didn't figure something out quickly to protect the name, that I was just going to be lost in a sea of stuff that was going to take a lot of energy for me that I wanted to use to actually do reality transurfing right. So that's uh -huh. when I so that's when I decided to actually take the action that I did. And then that set off a chain of events that was pretty, uh, pretty epic. And like what? I, Give me some highlights from that chain of events to make it show, so, show us the story, Renee. Don't just tell it. I keep telling you this in your writing. Show us the story, Renee. Give us some juicy bits. So I told all the dudes in the space that were using the term to profit or to make money that they needed to show up and do the thing well and not rip people off. And I took the bull by the horns and I was like, listen, I'm in charge now. I'm the US representative and I'm not going to allow any of you guys to take money from people and do like what Chad has been doing with a bunch of people wanting money back and filing complaints and all kinds of stuff. I'm like shape up or ship out. And the ones that didn't shape up, I just started taking heads off. I mean, I started getting pretty, I went in mercenary mode and it Did made you get me... legaled up? Did you get legaled up? Oh yeah. So what does that look like? You hire a lawyer and you say to write a bunch of cease and desist letters or you will face consequences? Pretty much. Okay. Yep. And they cease and desist? And they uh, do cease and desist? Some of them did and some of them did not. And, and the ones who do, who do not, what do they do? What the do you ones, do about them? the ones that did not suffered consequences. Like, can you things, give us an example? Like, um, Gupta got his fifteen thousand member Facebook group removed from Facebook. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Some pretty you, big. You 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 appealed to face Facebook directly. Yes. So when you don't, don't, so, don't mix up the stories, Renee, just stay in the phone booth. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's just stay with Chad. What ended up happening with Chad? You sent him a cease and desist letter. So what ended up happening with him is I messaged him a number of times and there was no response. And then finally I took some action against him and he went public and talked about me and Anne Vadim on a podcast and really mm. played it like he was this victim and they're coming after me and all this kind of stuff. Oh, and dear. yeah, and and finally, um, I I got his number from somebody that we knew that we know mutually, and I mm -hmm. actually just text him on his phone. And I was like, dude, we need to work this out. And he called me immediately. And then ever since then, Chad's been on the up and up. So he doesn't talk about transurfing anymore, but right. he, he did the things that we needed him to do to fulfill the requirements that we set up that was going to- And to your knowledge, did he refund the people who were not happy? No idea. No idea. But I told him- I, I explained to him when I talked to him on the phone, I was like, he was like, why are you doing this to me? And I was like, 
dude, I'm doing this because one, you took my name Two, I have an onslaught of messages coming to me, asking me for refunds for your product. I don't even know what your product is. And three, so you're you using up. So dude, you're using up my, you're using my name and my reputation and profiting from it. I am losing because I'm losing time and energy that I could be focusing on other things, dealing with crap that you have created. Yeah. So where, are you, where is it that you're coming from feeling the victim here? Yeah, I'm exactly. Trying, I, I'm, and I'm actually now trying to help you to straighten up a situation that should never have been bent in the first place. Well, and he admitted that he had seen my emails and he just overlooked them. And then I said, well, how about when you stole my name? Well, and he was like, that's convenient. That yeah, convenient. I know exactly. And he was like, well, I realized once I realized I stole your name, I removed it immediately. And I was like, once I realized I stole your name. I realized like he did it unconsciously. Oh, like it was a coincidence. Oh, yes. Reality Transurfing Academy USA. He's, so, that's a, he's Chad sounds, I don't know Chad, I don't know who you're talking about, but it sounds like he's full of crap. Well, a lot of these people seem to right. have some issues with some <laughs> like with honesty and in, with their <laughs> honesty and integrity and walking the so, walk and talking the dog yeah okay so gupta yeah. so gupta was the next so that's the one. end is that is the, so that's the end of chad yeah i mean chad you know yeah that was kind of the there's there's a little more there like you, you know just he, he he i think he said some things publicly about me and vadim on his social media beyond the podcast and i kind of let it go you know and i yeah. was just like dude listen as long as you as long as you aren't just flat out exploiting people and you like at least adhere to some moral code, like do what you want, but like it, what I'm asking uh, here is not outrageous, you know? Yes, grow, grow a moral compass and have it pointed in, in approximately the right direction. And, and, and I don't want to hear any more people coming to me want, wanting refunds for something that you're not providing. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. So. Yes. So yeah. in terms of the spiritual fraud, 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 bleh, fraudster types, a lot of them work on charm to get their stuff. A lot of them work on, they, they, so they can be charming or they can be, come across as the wise, the wise person, the wise man or the wise woman. Or um, some of them also come across as the parental figure. Which camp did Chad fall into? Mm. What was his main tool of getting people roped in? Well, I would have to say his main tool of getting people roped in was actually the use of the term reality transurfing. He was the first no. one on the scene. And so, he was appro so he basically, appro so he was an appropriator. He was borrow He was stealing he, somebody else's reputation. In he was the do novelty that. of it. Yeah, he was okay. the novelty okay. of it to, and, and I would say maybe. So he's stealing the ram. Yeah. So he was stealing the brand. Stealing the he brand. He was yeah, he was he was exploiting the term and I would say maybe charisma, but right. I personally do not find him charismatic. Um But some people will. But some people and will. He, and he will ex and he and exploits that as well. Yes. Or continues to I don't know. I don't know whether what he's doing because I don't know what you're talking about. But the point is beware of people who use charm. I don't think a lot of people listening to this podcast would actually have anything to do with him, but okay. who knows? But, no, I mean, no, who knows? Yeah. Well, there are millions of people watching. You don't know what they're all thinking. <laughs> so. Doesn't this feel kind of dirty to be like talking about these things publicly a I, little I, bit? I, well, not I don't, I don't think so because I think we're like doctors diagnosing a disease and this is a disease and people have to be warned about the, this is, I mean, and some people are carriers of this disease, and this disease is uh, peddling false hope. Yes. And exploiting. God, and ex and isn't exploiting, that the truth? And That's... this is exploiting, exploiting the exploitable. Yeah. And we're, and also we're just trying to protect ourselves. We don't want to be associated with people who are behaving badly. Yes. And so people are behaving badly, and we expect to be called out. If somebody is, if somebody says, like, Renee, I hate you. Yeah because blah, 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 blah. 
you're interpreted you're entitled to say well why what is it what do you believe has caused you to come in down on judgment of me like that and then they have to say well a certain amount of things happened and yeah i mean i'm not i'm not is, the evidence is either there or or not that certain things happened and then here's the yeah there. this this is the thing and and i think this is a valuable valuable point to to stress now is i'm not passing judgment on anybody you know i to each their own everything every story in the next one you'll see like it affected me a lot more than mm -hmm. chad did chad was kind of like just a fly buzzing around um but some of these people in this space have like legitimately come at me to like cause me harm or steal my stuff you know that's okay. another thing and right. um i'm not i'm not passing judgment on anybody's way of doing anything what i'm talking about is what people what i have experienced in this sure. space sure. Sure. <laughs> which sure. is uh yeah which is um will, will bring me to my next story which is okay so story number story number two the saga of gupta <laughs> no no this is actually this is actually uh cindy Oh, this is a Cindy story. I thought yes. I was, we're going to finish with Gupta. Oh, you're, you're we'll finish with Gupta. It. Gupta was kind of just Gupta was like Gupta was like one of these characters that you know just had it coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so it, was, it was real easy to just like just chop his okay. head off. <laughs> All right. So another okay. story of Cindy. Cindy. She has a very popular podcast. You did that so smoothly, Renee. <laughs> has a very popular channel, and she has done more for <laughs> promoting me and reality transserving than anyone else in the space. Cindy right. also um, did not know that certain people that she was corresponding with were actually um, Camp ITI. And we're sending me screenshots of um, very, very malicious acts that were planned against me. And really? yes. Like what, pray tell? Well, you know, not so much um, like, like exact details of what was going to be done, but things the general tone the general tone the general was. tone we are gonna we are gonna fry this bitch we are gonna watch Why? her you know the, it kind of um here's the interesting thing is that cindy's very two-faced and at the same time that cindy was saying things about you know wanting to see me burn at the stake <laughs> yes calling me the C word, Cindy oh, would, really? Cindy would also invite me on to her podcast as a guest onto her channel as a guest, as, as what I interpreted as, um, like a guilt offering. So I would receive these screenshots of Cindy planning malicious um, you know, having a malicious tone about, you know, oh, how, what can we do? How can we get her? Are you in her group? You know, things like this. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so childish. And then literally within the same period of time, 24, 48 hours, Cindy would invite me onto a podcast and then would be very happy to have me on as a guest. And I never let Cindy know that I knew all these things that Cindy was planning or uh, intention Cindy had for me. So I'll tell you what ended up happening. And I actually spoke about this once on one of my videos. And it was very, very, very shocking to me at the time because I could not understand the mentality behind what exactly like would compel somebody to do this. But I got a, um, I got an email from someone that was of a different name saying, could I get some more details on your course? And I said, of, of course. And I sent details and there was lots and lots of questions about my course. And then finally at the end, the person said, 
I would like to sign up for your course. And I said, great. Um, here's the Facebook group, the exclusive Facebook group. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to contact me. Mm -hmm. So this person then started asking me lots and lots and lots of questions daily to the point where it became sort of a, a major distraction. And I started to think that something was wrong with this person because the line of questioning was very strange. Like, well, Tony Robbins says this, and you're saying this. So um, can you please reconcile the difference between your, what you're saying and what Tony Robbins is saying? And I'm like, dude, I don't really know what t Tony Robbins says. I don't, I don't study anybody else's teachings, but there was lots of almost like drilling, drilling me. And it went on for, I would say probably about a week. And oh, then, wow, okay. yeah. So it was taking up a lot of your time. Taking up a lot of my time. And I felt for the person because it seemed like there was something wrong. It seemed like mm -hmm. there was something wrong. And I couldn't understand what was wrong, but I was trying to help the person and mm -hmm. it, by answering to the best of my ability. And then mm -hmm. finally, I told my assistant, I said, um, hey, you're going to have to take over these emails because I can't. I, there's seriously like 20 of them a day and it's becoming really distracting. She said, don't worry about it. So send him over, to, over my way. So I told the person, send her over, send her over, send her over, <laughs> send her over. So I told the person, I said, listen, um, my, my assistant, Lily is going to help you with any questions that you may have beyond. And if you want to ask these in the Facebook group, come into the Facebook group and I'll answer your questions. This person demanded in the next email to know why I had spelled Lily with an I and not a Y because her name was spelled with a Y. I can't remember how he knew her name. Maybe there was a correspondence before or something like that, but it was very strange. It was a bizarre, almost psychotic sort of email. And there was a demanding to know why I had spelled it differently than what, how they had seen it spelled with an I or with an uh, a Y. And I was like, oh my God, this person is, something's really, really legitimately wrong with this person. So I messaged my assistant and I said, Lily, can you look into this account and see if you can find any background information? Because I feel like something's off here. I don't know what I was looking for. I don't know why yeah. I was, what I was sensing, anything like that. I just said, can you do, can you run, can you see what the name is on the credit card, anything? And what came back to me was probably the most shocking thing I have encountered in this space. It was- And it was? Cindy. It was Cindy. So Cindy was, had been, was masquerading under another name and asking all of these psychotic questions. Yes. To what end do you think? I have no clue. I have no clue. It disturbed me. Like, I'm not kidding you. I felt somewhat violated. I felt mm -hmm. it was bizarre my brain for the next three days was trying to reconcile what the benefit or gain was for this sort of behavior. And mm -hmm. I could not get past it. It was, it was surreal. And mm -hmm. to this day, I don't have any answers. I don't know why Cindy did this. I don't know what the intent was. I do know that, um, and I'm not, this is just speculation. I could totally be off on this, but I do know that all of my course content has been stolen mm -hmm. and sold by other people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. maybe that could have been something. I don't know, but this is what I'm talking about. Like these spiritual frauds, in my opinion, aren't only mm -hmm. preying on the people that are willing to pay for a course. Mm -hmm. They're also willing to go after other people for other means. And I don't mm -hmm. necessarily understand all of these things, nor yeah, we, do, we, I, we, nor we, do we, I want we, to. Well, <laughs> it's, 
well it's sort of industrial espionage isn't it it's but it's hard there's there's a if you're going to be putting stuff out there there's really not much conventionally that you can do about getting people stealing your intellectual property at the end of the day they can cut and paste or if they want to bo bother going to the trouble of transcribing stuff etc cetera, etc cetera, and oh. pass stuff that isn't their work off as their own you can, there's not really much conventionally you can do about it from no. a transurfing point of view you can simply set the intent that that doesn't happen or that people will preferentially go to your stuff because some little alarm bell will go off in their head saying mm, i'm not sure about this guy or this gal yeah whatever yeah. uh that's all we can do i mean and that can be and that can be very effective yeah we don't have to live in the we don't have to live in the universe where this sort of happens but the fact is that when this sort of thing happens it shows up that there's something that needs to be cleaned up mm -hmm. at least in our layers of reality to minimize this happening yeah i mean it's an interesting it's an interesting um you know in my business in my jewelry business there's a lot of stuff that goes on. I'm happy that I saw in the very beginning what type of business that I wanted to have and what type of business that I did not want to have. Mm -hmm. And I went about cultivating the right contacts and the right people. Everyone that I do business with, I trust. You know, I would send a $10,000 piece of jewelry with no payment to all the different people that I do business with because I know that they're good for it, right? I don't have to get payment up front and they would do the same for me. Like trust for me and developing solid relationships that have spanned lots and lots of years. This has been very meaningful to my business and I have no, like there's no anxiety in my business. Whereas a lot of people in this business do have a lot of anxiety in the jewelry business, do have a lot of anxiety because they haven't done that. And they will like, somebody will say, Hey, I'll give you a profit on this thing. If you just send it to me. And then they panic and worry until they actually get the check thinking that they could get ripped off because they very well could get ripped off. Right. I'm not in that position because I've been a little more careful. This, this has meant that I do less business. I take less risks, but my transactions are a lot safer. And moving over to this space, I've tried to do the same thing, but more or less what that's meant for me in this business is that I am rogue and I don't have a lot of people that want to have anything to do with me because I'm not in a position to establish connections with people that are doing weird stuff as you know, my story this morning um, relayed, it's like you will find yourself sort of isolated really, really quick in this space because there's a lot of bullshit flying around. And all, and, and all, and all we can say as a warning to those who, millions of people watching, one, Renee and I are working very hard to establish a very strong voice a unique voice. It's sort of like Coca-Cola coming up with a unique recipe because Coca-Cola sounds tastes like nothing else. There are imitation colas, but none of them quite match the flavor of Coca-Cola, right? So you will get to know the flavor of reality transurfing as it's produced by Renee and I. Yes. If you find that flavor being imitated by somebody else, but not being sold under our imprimatur, by all means, let us know, because it means that somewhere, somewhere is stealing and behaving yeah. unethically. It, you know, it, it is so weird. Like this conversation is blowing my mind that we're having huh. Just the fact that like that we have to have the that we have to have the conversation at all. Yes, just me telling the story of Chad and Cindy and Gupta. <laughs> I mean, to think of this sort of stuff—stealing names, stealing content, posing as other people, 
saying they want to watch the bitch burn at the stake, planning, you know, uh, some sort of devious takedown. Oh, and I didn't even get into the story of the, and I'll just name this dude, Mr. Bozo in the very, very, (laughs) Mr. Bozo in the very, very beginning a lot of people thought that this guy was this big, lovable, jolly trans-surfing character. He, uh, his intention was that he wanted to get me into a position where he was just going to flat out take over everything that I've done, remove my name and my image off of it and put his name and his image on it instead. And I figured out in advance that he was planning to do this and removed him from the community and got slack from people because I didn't tell the story because I didn't want to like, you know, give it any more, any more importance. importance. Yeah. yeah. But people were like, why'd you remove this guy? He was so nice. And I'm like, Oh my God, what is going on here? This is like the freaking twilight zone. Talk about the, what's the, uh, <laughs> the the movie yeah, in the what, 80s of of the woman that had multiple personalities i'm like jesus oh, christ <laughs> um you'll think of the one that sally field was in yes yes um yes it'll come to me in a second yes sybil sybil yes sybil. and and you know and which and is they- a, which is a really interesting which is a really interesting choice of name because for those of you who don't know sybil the sybil sybil used to be a title it used to be the uh, prophetess in uh, ancient Greece were the Sibyls, and they would commune with the spirits and they would speak through the spiritual voices. So I think that was an allusion to that sort of behavior where you where you are you are some other personality is speaking through you. Yeah. So you know, and, and, and he, here's the thing though. Like with Mr. I'm not- Bozo? with 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 all of these with With all of these with all of these characters including me right we're all flawed we're all flawed we're none of us or i'm not trying to sit here and say that i'm not a flawed person but Mm. i would never steal someone's content you know what i'm saying i would pass it off as your own yeah, yeah i would never do anything that's like go sign up for somebody's course pretending to be somebody else to see how Mm. much time I could waste of that person and what I could get out of them for what reasons all that kind of stuff I mean I... Mm.